Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated the sacredness and the blessedness of this month when he mentioned in his blessed speech and with his blessed tongue sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Rajab is the month of Allah, Sha'ban is my month and Ramadan is the month of my ummah. So each of these three months have a special a place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our Creator. They have a special rank with Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioning each of them and is mentioning a distinction of each of them. That Rajab is the month of Allah, Sha'ban is my month and Ramadan is the month of my ummah. And why the ulama ask the question and they reflect and they explain why the month of Sha'ban is related to the Prophet And the foremost explanation that they provide is that the verse of the Qur'an, which is specifically so beloved to our hearts, and beloved to the hearts of the Mu'min and the believers, the verse of Salawat, the verse of, the verse of Durud, was revealed in the month of Sha'ban. Which, is, which, is, which verse is that? The one I just recited, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي that indeed Allah and his angels send blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم they bless the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا O believers صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما that salute and send blessings upon him ask Allah invoke blessings upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and salute him, greet him with a worthy, worthy salutation. And since this verse was revealed in this month, this month is directly connected to the Prophet Muhammad And the ulama and the scholars, they say that since this month was the, the place or the, uh, this, was the, this was the month in which this verse was revealed, then we should increase in salawat and salam upon the Prophet especially in this month. We should increase in salawat and salam all the time, but especially in this month, increase your number that you do usually on a regular day or a regular night. Increase the number that you do, so that you can gain a higher or deeper connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And know, know this, my dear brothers and sisters, that if you're remembering, if you're asking Allah to bless the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you're remembering Allah and you're remembering the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because you're saying Allahumma salli. Allahumma salli wa sallam. You're saying Allah. You're remembering Allah, and then you're remembering the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ala Sayyidina Muhammad, wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad, or any formula of salawat that you know, Durud Ibrahim, salawat Ibrahimiyah is the most famous and the most exalted salawat. It's the most effective one. Durud Ibrahimiyah, salawat Ibrahimiyah, the one that we recite in salah. This is the greatest salat because it was directly taught by our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the companions. Because when they, when this verse was revealed. Then indeed Allah and His angels send blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu All believers send blessings upon him and greet him with a worthy salutation. The Sahaba, look at the, the concern of the Sahaba for each of the verses, right? Look at us, our state. We read the Qur'an, we recite the Qur'an, you know, and we, we, we just recite the Qur'an. We have no concern really to understand the verses. I'm not saying everybody, illa mashallah, generally speaking, and I'm including myself in this. We recite the Qur'an, we have no that concern that the Sahaba had. That when the, when the the verse was revealed, they would go straight to the Prophet. So what is the meaning? So we can act upon the verse. So we can gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right away. This is how we should be. So they went to the Prophet and they said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know how to send salam upon you. We know how to greet you. Right? We know how to say, what's the greeting? As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the greeting that we recite in salah. We know this, O oh, beloved messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but how do we uh, send blessings upon you? What is the meaning of sending blessings, O oh, oh Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Ya Rasulullah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught them this nuskha, this uh, formula of, of sending blessings. He said, Allah say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala al Muhammad wa salli ala Ibrahim wa ala al Ibrahim inna ka Hamidul Majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala al Muhammad wa barik ala Ibrahim wa ala al Ibrahim inna ka Hamidul Majid. So this was directly from the Prophet ﷺ. He is teaching us 
and all Allah sent blessings upon not only the Prophet but also his family. Just the, the same way that you sent blessings upon Prophet Ibrahim and his family and so forth. And if we add the word Sayyidina, this is good. The ulama say you can say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. You're increasing in ta'aleem of Rasulullah. You're increasing in respect for the Prophet But the original wording of the Prophet was Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. But if you say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad, mashallah, this is also great. Because you're, you're increasing for respect for the Prophet The ulama, they've said that this is great. To add Sayyidina, because the, the Sahaba, they already had enough respect. They had so much respect for the Prophet Right? That even if they said Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, they knew that who they're talking about. They knew that this is the Prophet of Allah sallallahu For us, because we're forgetting and we're not in the physical time of the Prophet sallallahu if we add Sayyidina or Mawlana, the reason we're adding these words is not to add them from the words of the Prophet sallallahu No, it's not like that. And the reason we add these words is to remind us who the Prophet sallallahu is. To remind, of, to remind us of his exalted character and his rank before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reason why we say Sayyidina wa Mawlana wa Habibina wa Shafi'ina Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It's not to change the wording of the process, no But it's to remind us because we forget We're in a time 1400, more than 1400 years After the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam physically departed from this world We forget the rank of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Whereas the Sahaba, look at their character Look at their respect for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam They would not even let the wudu water drop From the, from the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's blessed wudu They would collect that water they will not even let the blessed hair of the Prophet ﷺ, they will keep that for barakah, for tabarruk. They will keep the blessed uh, strands of hair of the Prophet ﷺ. And many, many other examples of how they respected and they treated and they had ta'adhi for Rasulullah ﷺ. So when we say Sayyidina wa Allah, this is reminding us who our Prophet ﷺ is. And he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ana Sayyid wa Bi Adam, that I am wala fakhr, that I am the leader, the master of all the children of Adam and I have no pride about this. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him as a rank, as the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the month of Sha'bah. This is the month of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the month which bridges Rajab and Ramadan. But unfortunately it's a bridge, but at the same time sometimes this bridge is neglected. MashaAllah we spend and we exert efforts in Rajab, we get ready because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this supplication, he used to ask God, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab, wa Sha'ban wa lana Ramadan. That oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in the month of Rajab, in the month of Sha'ban, and allow us to reach the month of Ramadan, in the blessed state, right? Obviously because he is asking Allah to bless us in Rajab and Sha'ban, that means he wants to us to enter into Ramadan in this blessed state, that we're ready to receive, and our hearts and our spirits are ready to receive the outpouring of Allah's mercy and blessings in the month of Ramadan so that we can truly benefit from the fasting so that we can truly benefit from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to attain from fasting which is taqwa which is, which is uh, being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our states being conscious being not only fearing Him but fearing and loving Him in the sense that we are always found uh, committing those things which are pleasing to God, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are never found in those places or those states which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the meaning of taqwa actually right? not some people they translate taqwa as fear, fear, fear well it's not always fear right? with fear you also have to have love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't have love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can what, what have you achieved? What have you, uh, achieved? Right? so taqwa is actually an awareness, it's a consciousness it's being conscious of Allah at every step of our way. In our outward actions and states and our inward actions and states. Like Ihsan. The Prophet taught us the three levels. Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Islam is, you know, the basic... Uh, the Prophet well, this is in the Hadith of Jibreel. What is Islam? The, the, the Prophet Wasallam gave the pillars of Islam. The five pillars. What is Iman? The, the pillars of Qan Iman. The Prophet Wasallam explained. What is Ihsan? The Prophet ﷺ said, as you, as you worship Allah, as if you're seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you cannot see Allah, know that He is seeing you all the time. He's watching you. So this is taqwa, this is ihsan. We try to achieve, uh, we try to aim for this. And we ask Allah by His barak and tawfiq and the blessing of Rasulullah that He give us this and He grants us this. You know what I mean? So, my dear brothers and sisters, we shouldn't be neglectful of this month because it's a bridge to Ramadan. 
If we've exerted ourselves in Rajab, don't waste that exertion. Don't waste that barakah by being easy or, or you know, taking it easy in this month. Right? Increase. Now, if you've done more in Rajab, do a little bit more in Shabbat. As the Prophet ﷺ narrated by Sayyidina Aisha, his blessed wife and the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq that Sayyidina Aisha has said that I never saw the Prophet ﷺ fasting so much besides Ramadan than in the month of Shabbat. So Ramadan is compulsory fast. Every day you have to fast, of course. Unless if you have a, a shari'i reason, a reason according to the sharia that's different. But we all have to, it's fall upon all of us. Right? But after the month of Ramadan, the Prophet would fast most in terms of extra fasting, optional fasting, nafil fasting in the month of Sha'ban. So much so that Sayyidina Aisha said, I would think that the Prophet fasted the whole month of Sha'ban. I would feel that he would fast almost the whole month of Sha'ban. That's how I would feel. Right? So this is what the Prophet is teaching us through his exalted character, how to get ready for this month of, uh, of Ramadan. Right? Not to be neglectful of Sha'ban, and then you know, losing the barakah that we received in Rajab, and then going into Ramadan and starting all over, it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very, very difficult. And we know, brothers and sisters, the reality is our fasts are longer than other places in the, in the world. Right? But inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have yateen, and we have hope that He'll make it easy for us, Ya Rabbul Alameen. For those people, we make a strong intention that we will fast, inshallah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors for us. Uh, because we are from the Ummah of His beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will not let us down right? so how can we prepare for fasting? we can start fasting now for example fast on the Mondays and Thursdays right? this is Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked why do you fast on Monday? he said I was born on the Monday As thanking Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala for my birth I fast on the Monday why do you fast on Thursdays Ya Rasulullah? I fast on Thursdays because the A'mal are raised to the heavens on this day, on the Thursday. They are shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This doesn't mean that Allah doesn't look at the A'mal any other day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our A'mal all the time. But it's a metaphor for saying that Thursday is a special day. Thursday, and we know Thursday night, the Jum'ah starts. So it's a special day where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wants to spend that day before the night of Jum'ah in a state of fasting, which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's teaching the Ummah. This right, so this is everything that he did, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was a is teaching for us, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? Because he is Sayyidul Ma'asumi, he is the one who is sinless, the one who is the purest of pure. But uh, he was sent as a teacher for the ummah, he was sent, sent as a mercy for the ummah and for all the world, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What else can we do? We can fast if we cannot fast Monday and Thursday to prepare for Ramadan. We can fast uh, three days of the of the month, which are known as Ayyamul Bil. In Arabic, the, the white days, which are the days according to the lunar calendar 13, 14, and 15. This is when the moon is the brightest. The Prophet taught us to fast, and he would fast himself on these days, Ayyam al Bil. And it's said in the narration and, and, and some of the kutub, like the kutub of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jinani, Aziz, that this was actually the fast that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to our father Prophet Adam. Adam alayhi salam. Our, our father Prophet Adam, peace be upon him. That this was the fast that he used to do from that time. And of course the Prophet Sallallahu continued that. So the 13, 14 and 15 of every lunar month has lots of barakah and it's very purifying for the nafs, mashallah. Other than that, if we cannot fast any other day that we can fast, alhamdulillah, we try to prepare ourselves because the fasts are longer and in Ramadan we don't want to have a problem in the beginning. And we want it to be smooth, inshallah. So inshallah, my dear this is with may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. We ask you, uh, all of you to make dua for us, so we make dua for each other. We make dua for the ummah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our gathering here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compass us in His mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us His love. The love of His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The love of the Ahlul Bayt and the Sahaba radiallahu alayhi wa sallam. The love of the awliya Allah, the love of the salihin. The love of our parents, Ya Rabbul Alameen, the love of the Ummah, Ya Rabbul Alameen, and the love of humanity as a whole, because they're all creation, they're our creation. Uh, we have the cre uh, our brothers and sisters in Islam and faith, but we also have brothers and sisters in humanity, right? They are also our brothers and sisters because we share the common origin, which is Prophet Adam alayhi salam, who is our father. Alhamdulillah, so we make dua for them as well, we supplicate for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove any sufferings from the Ummah of Rasulullah so any people who are sick, who are ailing, who are ill, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them cure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them shifa and afiyah, ya Rabbul Alameen. 
all those who have passed away from the Ummah of Rasulullah we ask Allah to raise their rank and to enter them into paradise and to Jannah al Firdaus, Ya Rabbul Alameen, and to give them the murafaqah and companionship of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the, SubhanAllah, uh, one of the companions was asked, Rabia bin Ka'b al Aslami, he was a companion of Rasulullah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once was happy with him and he said, Ask what you want and you will be granted. He said to his companion Rabia, and Rabia used to serve the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi He used to serve him, he used to take care of some of the affairs of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ask what you want and Allah will grant you that. Ask what you want you. And then Rabia was swimming, he was smart. He didn't say something right. He said, Give me some time, Ya Rasulullah. Give me some time to reflect and think, and then I'll come up with the answer. So the next day or three days after, it depends on the narration, he came back and the Prophet, he said to the Prophet Ya Rasulullah, you asked me to ask and I will be granted. I have chosen that I want your companionship in Jannah. SubhanAllah. Look at the answer of the Sahaba. I want your, he didn't say I want Jannah only. And he didn't say I want Jannah first and then your companion. He said I want murafaqataka, I want your companionship, O beloved Prophet, in paradise. And this teaches us that the companionship of Rasulullah is better than paradise. If we have the companionship of the Prophet this is considered better than paradise. And if you have it in paradise, this is light upon light, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the companionship of the Prophet in Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us his witnessing in Jannah. Alhamdulillah, sallallahu Wala ilaha illa Allah, wallahu akbar Subhanallah, walhamdulillah Wala ilaha illa Allah, wallahu akbar Subhanallah